Hello, welcome back. What happens after fluency? What happens after you get to this place where, you know, you think everything is so perfect and life is great because you're fluent? What happens after you get to this place? First thing I want to say is that fluency is not something that is given to you and you get to keep forever. What does that mean? It means fluency is not something that gets given to you, that is given to you, and you get to keep forever because it's yours. No, it's not. Unfortunately, and that is such a big, massive shame, you, after years of fighting, when you actually get to this place of fluency, if you don't work really hard to keep it, it will simply disappear. Just like that. And one day you're going to wake up and you're going to get the chance to talk to a native speaker and you will realise that it's changed. That it's not the same anymore. And you will really beat yourself up. This is an expression meaning you will be like, oh my god, how did I let this happen? I'm the worst person. And yes, it was your fault. When you get to fluency, there's after fluency, which means working really hard to maintain your level of fluency. So I was thinking about myself and thinking about something that I do consciously to make sure my fluency is still kind of the same, which is, um, I love to read, you guys know that. So what I do consciously, consciously, this is a conscious decision, what I do is, I normally choose a book that I know will be a challenge and recently I have read Virginia Woolf's A Room of One's Own which was a challenge and then straight after that I started reading and I finished Maybe You Should Talk to Someone by Laurie Gottlieb which is a wonderful book, 100% recommend but it's not a challenge, it's English that I am completely comfortable with so this kind of dynamics where I go from something really challenging to something comfortable is really good for me because at the same time that it really just drags me out of my comfort zone, it also puts me in a nice cozy place where I deserve to be after working so hard to be fluent. So it's not about being so hard on yourself like becoming your worst enemy. No, to keep up, to keep the fluency. Not at all. It really is about having this sort of dynamics where you go really hard on yourself and then really easy on yourself and, and, and you can keep this up, you know. And I use the same strategy when I'm watching stuff in English on Netflix, for example. So I have recently finished watching Greenleaf, which is American, and it's a, it's a really thick American accent. And also it's about stuff that I'm not so used to because it's about the church and like all these horrible corruption and terrible stories and so many things I don't go to church. So don't, so many things that I don't feel so comfortable with in terms of my listening. And so I pushed myself really hard to do that. And then I moved on from this to watching Firefly Lane, which again, whoa, massive recommendation. I loved it. It's really good. Really, really good. Firefly Lane. It's also American, but then we're talking about really everyday kind of English, you know? So that was not a challenge. And I, I really like to be able to put myself in those situations. But there is something that is key that is so important, which is to understand that you, my friend, can get something out of anything. So if you get a leaflet, like a, a one-page thing, a leaflet in English from this new takeaway around the corner, takeaway is like a shop that delivers food, like pizza, and kebab and stuff, if you're in, in England, you know what I'm talking about. And um, 
So you can get something out of a takeaway leaflet. I'm not joking. You can learn and not just keep the fluency, but boost your fluency with a leaflet. Like, no joke. I have recently downloaded a book um, onto my Kindle for the kids, which is called Coco Chanel. And um, it's, it's really cool. It's about Coco Chanel. Needless to say, right? Obvious, obvious, needless to say, yeah, I know. And um, it's a kid's book and I was reading it together with Dominic and I was like, okay, what can I get out of this book? And I got something out of the book because you can. And that is the great thing about trying really hard to keep the fluency because then you are looking for opportunities to make your English better than what it already is. Okay, so this this idea that you're going to get to a place where you, you're going to be so good uh, with your English that you don't need to learn anymore. No, it's not true. And it's exciting to keep on learning, you know, to say the least, really. So I hope this video has given you some sort of inspiration and has shown you that you will indeed have to keep on working hard. But it gets easier because at least then you're fluent. You know, so thanks for watching. See you later. Bye.